Hey guys, driving out here in the garden. It's been taking a while, but my squash is finally starting to actually uh, grow. Now it's interesting, and I really like vertical squash growing because these leaves are so big that if I can go tall, then I can actually have more of them. Um, and since I've got a limited space, that's what I do. Now what's interesting here is that you see these first two squash plants, there's some, there's some bush beans in between them, so you can ignore them. But we've got this guy here. This is a honey bear acorn squash. And this right here is a table queen acorn squash. You can see that they're growing very differently from one another. So this is what, what I believe is referred to as a vining kind of a squash. And it's called that, all squashes have these guys because they're in the cucurbit family and they all have these. So it doesn't matter whether they are vining or um, I don't know what the other one is called, but um, vining or not, they all have those. Um, but what makes a, to me, what I, what I would call a vining plant is you see the, the distance between that node and that node. See how wide that is. Um, and that goes all the way down. So you got a big wide gap between each of the leaves or each, each of the leaf sets. Now, if we go over here to the table queen, let's see if I can get down into this one. This one grows more like the zucchini that I grew a couple years ago that turned out to be like nine feet tall. But let me see if I can get in here. Ugh. Do you see the distance between one nodule and the next? I mean, it's, it's barely an inch. I, I mean, it's barely a finger gap between the two. And um, so that one is not ever going to grow as tall as one in which the gap between each uh, set of leaves is bigger. So that, that would be your, your hallmark. So when you, if you're not sure which ones you've got, um, I didn't know until these guys were probably into their second or third true leaves. And I don't mean the, the baby true leaves because the, they do produce a tiny version of a true leaf. But I mean, I didn't know until they were producing these full size true leaves. So I don't know. And unfortunately I haven't noticed on a package of seeds, whether they say this is a vining type or not a vining type. So um, I have yet to figure out how to know unless somebody tells you. So when I went to the uh, Home Depot or Lowe's, what they carried there was a table corn, a table queen acorn squash, and that's where that one came from. And this one, the first one, the honey bear, that came from a the, the plant section or the nursery of the, um, the Home Depot or the Lowe's. So that's why I went ahead and got two different ones because I wanted to try the two different um, squashes side by side to see was there a difference in the taste and it never even crossed my mind that there would be a radical difference in the growing pattern. So this guy I'm going to allow to go up to the top of my pole there. I'm going to be adding some um, cross bracing to it but for now it's just that. Um, and once it gets to there you can see how much farther it's got to go. Um, I'm just going to cap it off because I don't need to have a 20 foot tall acorn squash. The heck that that's going to be seven feet tall. It's taller than <laughs> we need to get a ladder up there anyway. And so now I'm going to, that means I'm probably, I might have to do a melon sling on this guy because it's just, there's no support for it other than a, a vertical pole and then the cross bracing pole. It's not the same. So another type of trellis I've got in is this one that came from a hardware store and I got this from another YouTuber who gave me that idea and was like that's awesome and it's easy to bend so I can just bend it over and then I can plant my whatever in this case it's cucumbers on each side of it let them grow up and over and then I've got my center bed to do and I'm going to be planting um, sweet potatoes so there that's what's going in today is sweet potatoes um, you can see I've got some random bits in here, but it's going to have more in it. Um, and then over here, I've got two different kinds of delicata squash. 
you can see the very different uh, look to them. This is still too young for me to guess whether or not, well, let's see. If I can look down here, you see the, dis the gap between that growing thing and this growing thing? This is not gonna be a vining type. So I've got three of them here. And fortunately, delicata squash does not get these massive leaves that would go on the acorn squash or the pumpkin, or in this case, what I'm looking at here is my spaghetti squash. These don't get, the delicata squash does not get anywhere near as massive a leaf, but it, I've got three here, so I might have to call one of them out. Um, those were these three seedlings, and they all came up, which is cool, but. Um, so this right here, that one is called a jester uh, delicata, and that came from Johnny's uh, seeds. And then this one over here is very different. You can see this one has a kind of a, a very silvery look to each of the leaves. And I don't know what variety this is called, but it is also a delicata squash. But you can see, do you see the, the gap between one leaf and the next is much bigger? So this is a vining type and it is finally getting big enough, <clears throat> finally getting big enough to reach my cattle panel trellis, so I'll be, I'll be putting this up today, and I'm gonna try and, now this is an interesting one. This is the only squash I've ever had in which it is, it is actually fruiting with female seeds, or female flowers, before the male flowers come out. This is the first one I've ever seen do that. I have no idea why. Um, it's kind of sad because <laughs> I'm watching all these female potential squashes just not have, not able to uh, germinate or pollinate, excuse me, big, big difference between those two. So I'm not able to pollinate the, these seeds, but there's three of them here. So they'll be going up each of these different, there's one, two, and three. So I'll, I'll, I'll train them up. I've got... There is my, my, my pumpkin squash, or excuse me, my spaghetti squash. So you can see here the difference between this trellis, which is a cattle panel trellis, and I've got one more that's gonna go up there to round this out. Um, but I have, since I haven't reached it yet, I'm not, not there, but I'm gonna need to put it in by the end of this weekend. But what I'm doing, let me walk around here. So this guy will be um, put on a spike, but he's too short yet to, to uh, bother with. But when I did a zucchini squash that was growing the exact same way as this one is, I still managed to get it over nine feet tall. And it produced from probably, I think I was eating zucchini from May to November when it finally died. And it only died because the lower of the um, attachments that I tied it to the pole cut through the vine and killed it. So the <laughs> Lord knows how long it would have survived. Probably another month um, because of our weather here. But you can see that how I'm trellising this guy up is in this case, I'm using these um, Velcro bands and I'm going around and I'm trying not to go too tight, but this vine has, you can see the indention there. So this vine, when I first put it on, see how loose it is here? This is fairly loose but see how small the vine is? So this one was put on when that vine was just as loose, but the vine has grown bigger. So I'm gonna, this is Velcro, so I'll loosen it. I'll take it off. And you can see that the, the stalk has been crimped a little bit. And I'm just gonna loosen it and retighten it, if I can get it with one hand here. And so that's, I'll have to come back when I've got both hands, but I'll have to double check and make sure that everything stays loose so I don't strangle the vine because that's what happened with the zucchini and it killed the vine, obviously, because I've got one stalk and if it, wherever this stalk dies, everything above it is not going to go. Um, so I like these Velcro bands because they do give me that ability to kind of go a little bit tighter and then come back and loosen it up. Uh, originally with the Originally when I was doing my uh, tying up, I was using kite string, or then I used twine. I, those are not options I like. 
Um, but in cases where it's possible, I really like wrapping the vine around the trellis. So in this case, I've got one anchor that is holding the vine to the trellis. And then after that, I'm just winding the trellis or winding the vine around the trellis. And the same is true for these uh, spaghetti squashes. You can see down there is my original uh, anchor point. And then after that, it's just weaving through the um, the trellis and then letting the vine do what it's gonna do here. Focus, please, there we go. So it'll grab on there, but I'm also gonna go through and pluck off all of those little side shoots. So that way I've only got one main stalk and when it gets too high for me to actually reach, I'm just gonna cap it off by cutting off the growth side of it and then letting it focus on giving me amazing fruit um, or amazing squashes. So that's how I'm trellising these. This is another one. This is a um, Waltham butternut squash. You can see the leaves are a whole lot smaller than its neighbor there. Um, so that means my, my acorn, or excuse me, my um, spaghetti is going to need most of this wall space. These three little vines can do what I'm going to do with the, uh, the silvery delicata over there, which is put them um, one and then two and three. And so again, <clears throat> I am weaving through the, through the, um, trellis. Let me see here, like here, I'm just going to train it and go this way. And then it will grow up and, uh, just keep going. So like this guy, I'm going to push it back over this way. And once it gets tall enough, I'll go over that line. It's not tall enough, so I'm not going to worry about it. Um, but that's that's how you train. That's how I have trained, excuse me, um, squashes vertically, depending on what kind of trellis I am looking at and what options do I have in terms of training it up. So um, I have noticed that when I'm training things up, especially when they're on a simple trellis, like these guys, these are simple trellises. This guy is a much more expansive trellis. Um, and so I could let each of those little side guys come out and make a new vine and just trellis it up exactly the same way I've, I've, done, I've done for the main stalk. But because I'm trying to grow multiple squashes on the same thing, I'm not gonna let it do that because these leaves are so giant and there's not enough space. They're already kind of crowded in here, especially once they get full size. I'm gonna have to keep them down to a main stalk, which is why I've let three of these guys grow and two of these guys grow. Um, and, and basically I have multiples of each type with the exception of my acorn squashes. Um, so that way, uh, they're manageable because if I don't, especially when I'm trellising, if I don't keep those side shoots within reason, then they'll just sprawl. I mean, they'll take over everything. That's what they're designed to do. So, um, so yeah, in this case, I can't afford for them to, to sprawl, but I also note that my spaghetti squash of all these, the spaghetti squash and the vining acorn are growing the fastest. So that's interesting to note. It'll be curious to see once these guys get really tall, then, and these bottom leaves start to uh, fade and I start pruning them, then this lower space will be available and all of the, uh, the greenery will be way high up. So that'll be an interesting, uh, <laughs> an interesting thing, which is what, I'm planning on because I, like I said, I'm putting, I'm going to be putting uh, sweet potatoes in the bottom and let the sweet potatoes run over the base. And by the time they're big enough to, to run over everything, those beans hopefully will be harvested. But yeah, so that's kind of what I'm doing, why I've done it, how I'm doing it. 
um, and how to tell the difference between the two types of, of squashes and what to consider when you're planning for your trellising. And I, I, I say planning, in my head that's in quotes because it's always a, uh, I wasn't planning on this guy to be a vine. I was like, oops, those guys, I was obviously planning to be a vine. Look at all the support that I've got for them. And then this one turned out to be a vine. Ah, crap. So, so <laughs> let's manage this as best I can. Um, and so that's what I've come up with. Like I said, this is gonna have a little tripod attached to it as it gets taller, especially once it starts setting some fruit and uh, adds weight to this thing. So that'll be an interesting, an interesting endeavor. So anyway, that is three different types of trellising options. I guess technically four if you consider that guy, but because these are gonna grow the type that they are, this trellis is no longer adequate. So I'm gonna pull this trellis. Um, I'll probably put it somewhere else in this garden, move it just a little bit so that way I can put stakes in for these delicata squash because they're not going to be vining delicatas like those guys are. But I do want them to grow up so there'll be a, a stake um, for each of them and then they'll tripod together and I'll, well, I'll run them up the tripod. Um, and then I'll let this one, I don't know what I'll do and we'll find out. Um, but anyway, there you go. Some, some ideas for how to trellis up your squashes. All right, guys. Y'all have fun. Bye-bye.